it's time for another Mega Mailbag. Good to see what I've got this time. Stick around. Don't forget to subscribe, click the like button, that sort of stuff. Or see some RS components. I don't know how you can possibly know that, but anyway. This is some silicon cable. I got this for something I've been doing recently where I've been doing some repairs on. Well, you wouldn't have seen this yet because those videos aren't out. I'm actually not sure when they'll come out. Might be before this video, might not. You may have seen them. Anyway, it's a silicon wire and it's uh, quite high voltage stuff. You take a kilowatt apparently. Kind of decent insulation. Oh, that's not pretty well centered, is it? I need to get some decent silicon cable for doing repairs on these bits of equipment, which are electrofusion devices. Electrofusion is a thing which is basically a coil heater and it melts plastic pipes together. It's got special fittings. I've done a couple of videos on some units I've repaired. It made me realize that I needed to get some of this wire because I didn't have any silicon wire of good enough quality to replace wires when, which were damaged. I did have some silicon wire, but the insulation was a bit thinner than I liked. It was quite thin insulation and I wanted to make sure it's going to be good quality and safe because these things, you know, have a couple of hundred volts as well. I think it's about 100 volts AC goes through them or something like that when they're doing these particular things. So I had to make sure that it was going to be okay. This stuff's fairly expensive. I think it was about $50 for this packet here. It wasn't cheap, but at least now I've got some. There won't be links for this. There will be links for other things. You may notice I'm doing a battery test over here. Now, also, you may, may or may not have seen this particular video. It's on the, one of Datron's. That's the battery I took out. I'm testing its capacity to see how much is left after 30 years. And it's actually doing surprisingly well. I'm not going to spoil it by telling you right now, but you know, if you haven't seen that video, go and check that out. Switches. I ordered these ages ago. I've finished the project now. No, I don't need them. <laughs> I ordered a few different types of switches because I wasn't quite sure which one I was going to use. And this was actually one of my preferred ones because it's got quite a nice long shaft on there. Everyone likes a nice long shaft. Dual pole. That's the common there. And it switches from the common there to that one that one or that one depending on which position it's in. Now I've got these originally for this project I just worked on and finished this thing which is a test jack for working in radios, CB radios. So there's a TX and RX switch on here. Now what I was going to do is have a three position switch like this all right so I could have silent TX, TX of audio and RX that's what the plan originally was but these hadn't turned up in time. Anyway I'll finish the project now damn shipping delays. So there will be links for these down below. Now I've purchased stuff from this guy before. This is an eBay purchase. I just recognised Top Dog Pest because you know, I've purchased from them a few times now I think. Various things. I don't remember what I've purchased but I've purchased stuff. If I could get into it that'd be great. Pomona cables. Real ones. Now you would have seen me previously I've got some Pomona cables, which were not real ones. I'm pretty sure they're fake. So this is one I got before. It's all marked up as Pomona and stuff like that. But I think it's fake. It just seems a bit suspicious. I could be wrong. The colours are all wrong on the original one. So a little bit lighter than the cable. Things like that. The quality of this isn't as good. So it's flashed on here. Plugs aren't the same, that kind of thing. So I think that's a fake. Now I've actually, it was cheap as well on eBay. I actually contacted Pomona, sent them a link to the listing and said hey you want to check this out to see if these look real or not and also to my video as well and um, they're looking into it if they're real that's great that's fine but if they're not then I guess they've got a way of dealing with it so this is what I meant to buy it was this type all right because these ones don't have the guard terminal on them there's no guard obviously it's just the dual bananas banana um, <clears throat> minions again anyway so now I've got these ones so the model number was uh, 1167-18, so these are 18-inch cables, same length, plugs look different, as you can see, the plug's not the same. This is what made me initially suspicious that this is a fake cable, along with the markings on the cable. So the plug is different, different design, because this is the same as my other cables. This one, see, looks exactly the same. And the marking on the cable here, oh, it does actually have it on this one, I'll give them that, but it's in white, Pomona. So it is actually marked on this one. But the other one I've got, cable is marked only as build on. Here we go, it's marked on this one as well. So there you go, you can see it's marked as build on the cable on this one, right? Which is the same as my other unit, build on cable. This only has a Pomona marking on it, which is in black, not white, as per this cable. 
Um, and it doesn't have Belden or anything like that in it. No other markings, only Pomona. So the cable manufacturer's markings are not on it. That made me suspicious. Because I think they're maybe, you know, faking a little bit. But anyway, if it's real, please correct me. I, you know, I'm, I'm open to being corrected. If this is a real cable, please correct me. These ones which just turned up, they are real cables. I trust them. That's good. So now I've got two of those. And sometimes I just want hook, uh, short hookup cables like my other ones I've got, which are the same style as this. They are much longer. They are um, 24 inch cables than they were. And then sometimes you just want short ones. When you're trying to do calibration work, you just want a short cable to minimise effects of the cable. So I wanted to get some. These are fairly expensive cables to get, but you know, you need good cables, you need good cables. Simple as that. Thanks to my Patreon supporters. Really appreciate it. If one wants to be become a Patreon, help support the channel, you get some extra content as well. I'll do like pre releases of my videos to the Patreons, like mailbags that I tend to release to the Patreons, but other things like repair videos, I'll get those sooner, maybe even a week or two before everybody else does. And also include links to any files like data sheets, service manuals, that kind of thing. Include that with the Patreon information. So if you're looking for more detailed information about some repairs, then you may want to become a Patreon because I add extra information to that. Oh, right, this is a review item. Okay, this is Big Tree Tech. They contacted me about this, actually. And I said, uh, yeah, that sounds interesting. Because I did a upgrade to my Ender 3. I put in the SKR Mini E3 version 1.2. And I did a video showing me installing the BL Touch on that. Well, a 3D Touch. It's like a BL Touch clone, which is a distance measurement sensor. So you just, when it touches the bed of the printer, it pops up and it tells you when it's touched. They saw that and they th said, hey, do you want to try out our new one? The SKR Mini E3 version 2.0. So that's what I've got. It's a brand new board. Brand new version. And they sent me a rubber duck. Only one. I've only got three now. I don't have many rubber ducks. They send rubber ducks in one of their little quirks. Right. Uh, we've got some jumpers, some heat sink, silver adhesive and the actual module itself. I'm not going to open this up right now because I'm going to do a review on this thing. SKI Mini 1.2 is very similar to this. It's got, you have to stick the heat sinks on those driver ICs down here which run the stepper motors. And there should hopefully be connections for, yeah, because I've got, I've got the BL Touch on there. So I was looking for the BL Touch stuff. It's slightly different. I'm going to have to look into this and figure out how that's supposed to be done. Because I'm using dual stops and using my Z stop and a BL Touch, so it's got dual sensing. So before the bed leveling mesh kicks in, it knows where the bed is, so it will never drive itself into the bed because it's still got a built in original stop. So it's actually using both systems. That looks nice enough. We'd have to have a play with that, do a video on that soon enough. I've actually got a printer now, I need to print, 3D print a new um, cable rack. The other day I was standing on this desk because I was getting some stuff from up on my shelving up here. Anyway, I took a step back to get back off the desk and my chair had spun around, I didn't notice, and I kind of hit the floor. <laughs> you know, as I sort of came down, I hit the cable rack, which I 3D printed some time ago, and it broke it apart. So now I've got a bunch of cables laying in the corner of the room. I need to print a new rack, so I suppose I could do that as part of that test, couldn't I? Get this thing installed, get that working, and do a 3D print with it. Print a new rack. Sounds like a plan. Don't forget to subscribe and stuff like that if it's your first time here. You've never been to the channel before. Always looking for more subscribers and have a comment down below as well. Have a chat down below in the comments. Give me some feedback. Tell me what you think. Any questions, anything like that. Always willing to have a listen. Sometimes you have an answer. So these are some T6O's. I bought these about three months ago. Oh, these have finally have arrived. I think they're brand new. Yes they are. Unused. So perfect. So I wanted to have a couple of these. Because many times I've had better gear and I've just wanted to play around and just chuck a T6 on it because sometimes an oven oscillator is okay. The problem is that if you don't use it very often, it's not always powered up. You have to wait for it to warm up and that can take you know 10 minutes and maybe, sometimes 15, sometimes a bit more for it's stable. Well, at least a T6O is stable as soon as you just turn the thing on, pretty much, right? You know, within reason. It's going to be close. It will be a little bit of stabilizing time, but it's going to be pretty much there. Okay, you don't have the same wait time. If you don't need super precision measurements, then a TCXO is absolutely fine. There are advantages to having a TCXO over an OCXO. Obviously you want more precision than you want an OCXO, but if you're happy with the precision you get from a TCXO, then use that. Oh, weren't expensive? Oh, I think I'll probably have links down below for these. Yeah, I think I will put links for them. Um, but now I've got a couple for uh, my parts bin. 
So when I do get bits of gear which maybe have a dead OCXO, I can just drop a TCXO instead. It's one from 5 volts, so pretty much universal. You can put into just about anything really. So many things just not turn up from the recent shipping delays. I don't know if it's just that it's really delayed or whether they've just literally gone missing because it's been months and months. These have been a particularly long time. I ordered these also about three months ago, I think, actually. Maybe four, actually. It's, it's been a long time. These are Fresnel lenses. I've got different dimensions, different sizes, shapes. See, there's packets of different ones. All right. there's, I think it's like a 10 in each packet or something like that. The reason I've got these is that New Zealand has quite harsh sunlight. So any kind of plastics that are outside tend to perish quite quickly. And one of the problems with that is that any sort of security lights, that sort of thing you get, infrared security lights, which I've got present lenses on them, the lenses tend to fail after a year or so, maybe two years. They just don't last very long. Let's try and get a selection of replacement lenses and see if I'm lucky enough to get one which actually fits. I've got a security light on my garage and that has a fentanyl lens failure. And I'll be doing a little repair video on that. I may do it this weekend. And I'm hoping that I can use one of these lenses to replace the one which has failed. Um, even if I have to cut a lens down in size, it's still going to be better than having no lens. Because right now the light just comes on by itself all the time and doesn't turn off. Because the breeze of the air going through from the wind triggers it. Because it's an infrared sensor and any kind of heat sensing or cool sensing is throwing it off. That's why you need these. That's why they need to be sealed. There'll be links for these down below. Shipping delays aren't a seller's fault there because of the current crisis, you know. Me. Yeah. Oh, it's an eBay purchase. At least it's well packaged. Nicely done. Boxed and bagged and bubble wrapped. And it's got those peanuts, which can be okay, but they tend to fall out the way as everything moves around it, they settle and they end up going to the top. So they're not the best, it's a standard capacitor. These are actually sealed, I think they're, yeah, they're potted, so you can't do anything with them anyway, they're just, they're, that is what they are. I've got one of these before, this one, which happens to still be on my desk, which is upside down now. This is a one microfarad, 0.05%, and my measurements have been more accurate than that, I think it's only about 0.005% <laughs> based on the measurements I've been doing. And here's a 0.02 microfarad, What's that 20 nanofarad, isn't it? Plus or minus minus point zero five percent accuracy. So let's hook this up to something and let's see what we get. So here's my East Tester LCR meter, which is actually fairly accurate compared to my other meters. All pretty much measure the same thing. So I trust it fairly well. So this is currently at 100 hertz. And you can see it's point zero seven off compared to the standard capacitor. So there's probably a bit of tolerance between both units, which is causing that error. It's still not too bad. So let's change frequency. So that's 120 hertz. 200 hertz, that's getting much closer, it's 0.05 there basically. 400, that's within that now. So that's 800, 0.03 out. 1 kilohertz, 0.03 out. 2 kilohertz, 0.02. 4 kilohertz, 0.01. 8 kilohertz, 0.01 pretty much. And 10 kilohertz, 0.00. Oh, I suppose you could 0 0.01, couldn't you? Looks pretty good. This capacitor looks pretty accurate. If I drop the other capacitor on, uh, one microfarad, this does better at lower frequencies. But you can see it's not bad either. Okay, that's within that kind of tolerance too. And that's 100 hertz on here. <laughs> anyway, it's nice having a standard capacitor because then you actually know that you've got a real reading. And you can use that as a reference for testing. It's a test gear. If I'm doing repairs, I can chuck a standard capacitor on there. At least I know it's going to be really close to those measurements. I may be a bit of calibrate to these. That's kind of the idea. So that's good. Happy with that. Here we go. Here's the DR5000. I think I've got some slight dodgy connections though. It's fluttering around very, very slightly. It's not the best kind of connection system like this. But there we go. It's basically agreeing. But this one's reading slightly high. This is at 100 hertz. So 120 hertz. Looks basically bang on there. 1 kilohertz. That's still within that spec there. That's 10 kilohertz. So now it's looking a bit different there. Error. Oh, that might explain it. My battery's gone flat, I think. Maybe it's time for a new battery. Let's <laughs> see if this again. 100 kilohertz. Here we go. There's 100 kilohertz. Hopefully, before the battery dies. Yes, yeah, so there we go. It's not far off there, if it's 100 kilohertz. So I'm happy with that. 
it's time for new battery. So there you go, who's up to the signal? I'm using one of these new cables. And that's what it's giving as far as capacitance value. So that's within that 0.05% again. So which one do you really believe? I mean, we've got the signal which says it's slightly higher. Yeah, slightly higher there. The DER also says it's slightly higher. And the East Tester says it's slightly lower. Which one's right? I don't know, but it's all pretty close. So it's basically a 0.5% difference in accuracy across all of my meters that I've got on the bench here. So it's not that bad, is it? It's going to be in that region somewhere. Thumbs up, subscribe, click the bell icon if you're not already subscribed. And I'll see you in the next video. Don't forget to have a chat down below in the comments. And check out my links and other videos as well. And also check out the videos that are at the end. They'll pop up around here somewhere. There'll be some links at the end. Little screens, little square screen things like that. They pop up with like playlists and things like that. Other things you might be interested in watching. So go and check those out at the end as well. The more you watch, the more it helps my channel. Thumbs up helps my channel. Subscribing helps my channel. Do those things. Catch you later. Um, at the end of the video, there's probably something popping up now already. Oh, maybe later, actually. No, it'll be later. There'll probably be some stuff popping up later at the end.